Hello everyone, Hyper here, and this will be the first video where I take a look at the DK and Shadowlands. So this video will be all about Unholy DK and I want to cover everything that they've changed so far, uh, things I hope to still see changed, uh, some of the things I like and I don't like. Without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, the baseline abilities and what baseline changes they made. Probably the biggest change that they made to DK is how our mastery interacts with our abilities. So mastery in BFA only affects your shadow damage, which means that your pet's shadow damage is not affected by this. However, in Shadowlands, mastery will increase all your minions damage. So that means your pets, your gargoyle, your army of the dead, anything that you summon will gain a benefit from your mastery. Um, and this will have huge implications uh, as far as how our stat balance will work out, um, especially since one of our big damage sources should be from our pets in Shadowlands. And then for base abilities, they added back AMZ, 2 minute cooldown, 20% magic damage reduction, very beneficial ability. Um, in 4 raids, this ability alone should secure your raid spot unless dk just does absolutely no damage but it's a huge utility button and it's going to be very beneficial assuming that your raid can take advantage of it which at the mythic level most raids do then they also added back gargoyle baseline um so this is pretty important because we haven't had gargoyle baseline for a while and Having Gargoyle Baseline will make it so you can go for a full single target build without really having to sacrifice a talent in this last row. Because currently, Gargoyle does okay damage on uh, BFA, but it's nowhere near enough to compete with the other talents that it's on the same row. Also, the fact that our Mastery uh, will buff our Gargoyle is also a pretty big consideration and should make Gargoyle a lot better going into Shadowlands. Uh, then we have Sacrificial Pact. Sacrificial Pact just blows up your pet. If I can find it real quick. Um, there we go. So whenever you summon a pet, you can sacrifice it, um, which will deal shadow damage to nearby enemies, uh, to eight nearby enemies, so it's capped, like most abilities are in Shadowlands, and it will restore 25% of your maximum health. So all specs get this ability, as on Holy, I think it, this ability is the least beneficial from the other two specs, just because our, we rely on our pets to deal damage, to apply wounds if you're going the clawing um, or the infected claws talent. So sacrificing your pet for little AoE damage burst might not be worth it. So we'll just have to wait and see on how this works out. There might be some funky interaction where you need to like blow up your pet, then resummon it, then dark transform. Uh, just take advantage of everything but that's just going to depend on tuning on how much damage your pet actually does when it blows up um then we have lichborn baseline so this is a 10 percent leech for 10 seconds and it makes you immune to charm fear and sleep and you can also use it to break out of those effects so if you press it while those effects are on you it will break you out of them um, in BFA, this is Lichborn is a PvP talent that gives you damage reduction and it also slows you significantly. Uh, so they remove the slow component and they change the damage reduction to a leech, which is pretty good for certain situations, especially when you're bursting. If you're doing a huge amount of damage and you gain 10% leech, that is a pretty significant amount. Um, then we have a small change to Apocalypse. So Apocalypse has been changed from a 1.5 minute cooldown to a 1.3 minute cooldown, which makes it line up perfectly with Unholy Frenzy if you choose to take that talent. So they are no longer desynced uh, like they would be in BFA. And then the last significant change to our base kit is to Outbreak. So on live, whenever you Outbreak a target, it gains a debuff for 6 seconds, and every time it takes, it applies Varian Plague to that target and anything around it. They changed Outbreak to be more like Howling Blast, where you just use it once and it applies to Virulent Plague to your target and everything around it. Um, and to compensate for the 6 seconds loss, they increased this duration to 27 seconds. So I don't like this change too much because 
it takes away some of the planning that you're able to do. For example, on in BFA, if you outbreak a, a boss a few seconds before ads spawn, you don't have to worry about dotting, dot, dotting up those ads because as soon as they get close to the boss, they will just gain a very long plague. However, with this, you kind of have to wait for everything to group. They did increase the splash radius a little bit to compensate for this, but still, um, I feel like this is just going to be kind of a nuisance. And if you play Frost DK, you know that sometimes Howling Blast doesn't hit everything, and it's kind of annoying to get that dot up on all your targets if they're not grouped correctly. Um, a few changes they've also made is that certain abilities have rank 1s and rank 2s that you gain up as you level. So the more significant ones are Dark Transformation. Whenever you get rank 2, I don't know what levels these are at, but by the time you hit cap, you'll have all rank 2s. But at rank 2, whenever you press Dark Transformation, your pet will recharge its energy bar all the way to full. Um, on live, we don't have this. Whenever we Dark Transform, your pet just retains whatever energy it has. So this introduces the potential of having to macro your pet pet's claw attack into some of your abilities unless they change the way the pet works um because normally your if you look at your pet's energy it will constantly hover around like 30 to 50 so it's never going to dump all of its energy it's always going to try to stay around that half energy mark uh so that means that if you dark transform right when your pet is at like 40 energy and it hasn't cast a claw yet then you've just wasted a single claw um so hunters are in the same situation where they need to to macro their pets attack abilities to to certain um, rotational abilities. We'll see how that actually works out. Um, the second one is death coil. Whenever you get rank two, it reduces your dark transformations cooldown by one second. And then the third one is to death and decay. Uh, at rank one, while you stand in your death and decay your Scourge Strike will not actually cleave all nearby targets. You need to get rank 2 Death and Decay to be able to do that. Um, and then the other rank 2s, I think Scourge Strike and Festering Strike have rank 2s, uh, but that's just an increase to their damage dealt. So now some of the other changes are to the Talent Tree. In the first row, there's no changes as far as I know. In the second row, they capped the amount of targets your Bursting Swords will hit. So as you know, Bursting Swords is predominantly the, the most popular Mythic Plus talent in BFA because there's so much potential. Uh, whenever you do huge pulls, your Bursting Swords will do an absolutely crazy amount of damage. They kind of capped, capped it to, to only explode on 8 nearby targets, but there's a few ways of working around this to still maintain that large uh, Unholy DK AoE damage. Ebon Fever is the same. Unholy Blight has been slightly changed. So now instead of just applying one stack to your target while they're near you, it will stack up to four times, I believe. Um, and your pets will also deal increased damage to the target that you're attacking. So again, this could have implications with like Gargoyle, for example. If your Gargoyle deals increased damage to the target that has Unholy Blight on it, then it might be one of those things where Unholy Blight might be a good single target talent just to get that extra gargoyle damage. Um, but that's to be determined by tuning. In the level 30 row, I don't think there are any changes. Uh, level 35 row, no changes. However, I do want to address that special and postules should be buffed a little bit. Um, I think in all AoE situations, special and postules should be the go-to talent because getting wounds back or getting um, runic corruption whenever you pop wounds should be like in theory how your spec works on AoE because on AoE you have more wounds from infected claws for example so you should be getting more runes back however the proc rate at 10% it might be a little bit too low I think this should be be up to either 15% even 20 uh, so it's viably usable for decent uh, size pulls where you're just pulling like four to six mobs, typical Mythic Plus scenarios. Um, at 10%, at four to six mobs is not worth it to use this talent. So I really hope that they increase the proc chance a little bit. Same with Harbinger of Doom. This talent should be our go-to talent for single target. Why? Because 
Now we have Gargoyle Baseline, so we want to spend more Death Coils to empower our Gargoyle to do more damage. So in theory, this talent synergizes well with Gargoyle. However, the proc rate uh, or the increase that you get from it is not significant enough. I really hope that they buff this up to like 25%, maybe even 30%, just so you're constantly getting those Death Coils. Um, and also being able to store up to two charges of Death Coil is just a nice quality of life change. Typically, uh, it's kind of rare that you actually hit two stacks. Soul Reaper is good as is, and on certain fights where you can snipe the haste percent, uh, I think this should be the skill talent to use. So players who are looking for those passive options have Pestilent Postules or Harbinger of Doom, and then players who are kind of looking to be a little bit more involved and minimax a little more should have Soul Reaper uh, if they're able to snipe the 10% haste off of ads whenever they use it. However, if they are not able to get that 10% haste, then I don't think this talent should be better than the other two in its row. Level 40 row, no changes. Level 45, there's a few changes. Um, Defile is the only one that's been changed so far, and this makes it so Defile will grow in size and in damage every time it ticks uh, on an enemy. So Defile used to work like this in Legion and before that. And then in BFA, they changed it to just be a static. So now every time it ticks, it does more damage and it grows in size. Uh, while we're here, I also want to address Pestilence. Currently, there's a 10 uh, wound cap on, how, on Pestilence. So if you drop it on 100 targets, it doesn't have a 10% chance to apply a wound to each enemy. It does it up to 10. And then after 10, um, it stops working. So I hope that they remove that cap or they increase it a little bit because it would be really cool to see this talent be used more in Mythic Plus. Uh, if you watch the MDI a little bit, that's where this talent shines because the pulls last a very short amount of time and you don't have time to spam epidemics. So getting a few extra wounds from Pestilence was a huge benefit. Um, then in the last row, we have quite a few changes. Army of the Damned uh, now... Um, has an additional effect, which is the Magus of the Dead as right trait from BFA. So whenever you use Apocalypse or Army of the Dead, you also summon a Magus of the Dead for 15 seconds. So in BFA, it's 20 seconds. This is going to be 15 seconds. And that is going to make this talent a little bit more competitive. Currently on live, Army of the Damned is decent if you have a perfect fight length for getting an extra army. However, if your fight length is off by two minutes in either direction, the other talents are just miles better. So that's going to be interesting to see. This middle talent on Holy Pact is basically the BFA trait Hell Chains. So whenever you transform your pet, you end up with like a chain between you and your pet that deals damage. And also you gain 8% strength. I don't know a single person that plays this game who likes Hell Chains. Hell Chains was such a finicky talent that even when you were kind of forced to use one of them early on in BFA, your pet wouldn't always position in the correct spot. Um, sometimes you'd get the damage, sometimes you wouldn't get the damage. I don't like this talent one bit. I'd much rather have them add Festermite as a talent um, and just leave it at, at that. So Festermite would be a nice oscillation in your damage uh, that you can kind of play around a little bit. But if you don't want to play around it, it's still pretty decent. So this talent, I don't like one bit. It, ideally, or in theory, this should be like the AoE talent, but I really don't like the way they implemented this. Um, and then Unholy Frenzy is just the same as it was before. Okay, so those are the changes. Now let's talk about some of the implications of these changes. First of all, since our mastery now buffs pets as well, uh, there is potential to have like a build where you do damage as the player. So exa for example, if you went like Clawing Shadows, Ebon Fever, um, Soul Reaper, and like Epidemic, Unholy Frenzy, for example, this is a player damage build. So it doesn't rely that much on your mastery, um, even though Clawing Shadows does scale with mastery. But uh, you could also go a pet build, for example, where you go like All Will Serve, Unholy Blight, Army of the Damned, um, and then Defile, Epidemic, whatever. So in this scenario, your pets will be dealing a 
much larger portion of your damage than you will be. So in this case, you could have like a mass rebuild. What I am really looking forward to and what I hope is the case is that there will be a clear distinction between single target builds and AoE builds and not just on these first two talents. Because currently on live, uh, this is what your talent role lo 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 looks like. And then, so you do this for boss fights and then you do this for Mythic Plus and that's all you change. These talents, you generally don't even think about. Um, so I really hope that they open up the potential for single target builds that revolve around Gargoyle, like I said before. So you would have either All Will Serve or Clawing Shadows. Uh, and then in the second row, you would take Ebon Fever or Unholy Blight. This is just going to come down to tuning. Then here you would take Harbinger, uh, Defile, and then either Army of the Damned or Unholy Frenzy for a Gargoyle build. And then for an AoE build, you could go like Infected Claws, Bursting Sores, um, you know, ep Epidemic, Unholy Pact, or something like that. So that's my biggest concern, is that even with these talent changes and on Gargoyle becoming baseline, we might still be stuck in the same talents that we wore for BFA. Um, another concern that I have with Gargoyle becoming baseline is that in AoE, your Gargoyle will not be all that great. So you have a 3-minute cooldown that has basically no um, AoE benefit. So if you're doing like a 10 mob pull, for example, you're most likely not going to want to use Gargoyle. Um, or if you do, it's going to do very little compared to everything else that you press. So I hope that they find a way to make your Gargoyle either cleave um, or even come up with a talent or a legendary that allows your Gargoyle to gain some benefit on AoE. Um, lastly, I want to address all the things that Unholy DK is losing moving from BFA into Shadowlands. So we're losing Vision of Perfection. We're losing Magus of the Dead, uh, which is becoming a talent, kind of. We're losing Fester Might, and we're losing all of our Haste Amp Corruptions. And that is kind of concerning because all those things kind of worked in synergy to make Unholy playable. Not even do insane damage, just playable. If you think before Corruption, uh, before, well, Festermite was added in BOD, if I remember correctly. But before any of that, Unholy was absolutely miserable to play. And we're losing a lot of those things that make Unholy feel decent to play. So I really hope that they compensate for that in some manner. Uh, some of these changes they've made, such as returning Gargoyle, are good changes. However, uh, we do need to have some sort of base state for Unholy where it doesn't feel like absolute garbage to play for the first or first two tiers of an expansion because we simply don't have the stats for it yet. But with that out of the way, the last thing that I want to touch on are the Rune Forges. So Rune Forges are kind of cool. They added a few new ones and all of them have implications for both specs. I will only go over the DPS ones for now. So Rune of Hysteria increases your maximum runic power by 20, which means that you're able to store up three dead coils instead of two. So instantly you should be thinking, oh, if I can store up three dead coils, that means I can empower my gargoyle faster. Um, and also you have a chance for your runic power regeneration to increase by 20% for eight seconds. So it's kind of like runic corruption, but for your runic power. Um, this, I think, is mostly targeted at Breath of Syndragosa Frost DK. However, on single target, it might have some implications with Gargoyle, because Gargoyle feeds off of your runic power. The more runic power you spend, the more damage your Gargoyle does. So there is some potential interaction there. Uh, Razor Ice is the same. Um, Sanguination is for blood. Spell wording is for blood. Rune of Apocalypse. So back in Legion, whenever you used Army of the Dead um, or Apocalypse, those ghouls that you summoned would attack the target and would uh, apply random debuffs. And those were Healing Reduction, uh, Increased Damage Taken from the Death Knight, and Reduced Damage Dealt to the Death Knight, um, and one that was a slow. So that was great because whenever you summoned Army or Apocalypse, you had a lot of ghouls out, so all of them were applying those debuffs. This rune, however, 
makes it so your ghoul's attacks have a chance to apply it. So unless these debuffs last long enough or your ghoul is attacking fast enough, it is not very likely that this will be a rune that we see being used. I really hope that they either add this back to Apocalypse. So then, for example, if you're going like an Army of the Dam build uh, with like All Will Serve, all of, if all of your pets were constantly applying these, that would be cool. Um, however, since it's only your ghoul's auto attacks or claw applying it, um, I don't see that much interaction. Fallen Crusader is the same. And then another new one is Unending Thirst is you get 10% haste and movement speed and you heal for 5% of your maximum health whenever you kill an enemy that yields experience or honor. Additionally, increases your movement speed while dead by 10%. So this is kind of like an open world rune forge where, you know, if you're leveling, this will be probably the go-to. And then once you reach uh, the level cap and you start putting like a raid build or a mythic plus build or arena build together, that's when you switch to some of the other uh, rune forges. So those are the unholy changes. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. Uh, I'm really excited. And at the same time, I'm really concerned about certain things but hopefully we'll see another few waves of changes and they iron out some of the issues that we still have on unholy dk however it does look promising again thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye